Welcome to the channel people. This is my tutorial Tuesday series. Today we are going to be decoupaging a napkin onto a piece of wood. This series is going to be very raw footage. I will be talking live through it with very little voiceover and these videos will just feature one project and it will be step by step based trying to answer as many questions talking through the processes as or through the process as we go. In my DIY Friday videos, we go really fast through the projects. I've had a lot of people over the last several months really want me to go into detail about more things. So hopefully these tutorials on Tuesday, I'm not sure if I'm going to do them every Tuesday or just a couple times a month, but you will have to let me know in the comments below how you enjoyed this video and if you got some value out of it. And please mind the editing. I'm just going to say that now because I'm not sure how I'm going to edit this. I've never filmed anything like this. So we're going to learn as we go today and I'm bringing y'all along on this journey with me. So I know some of y'all to start out with, you're like, Brandy, what is this? Um, I recently did a decoupage mediums video where I use this stuff and this stuff works just as good as Mod Podge. Mod Podge is my favorite but if I'm being real here, I'm really low on my Mod Podge. So I'm going to use this for today. And if I felt like it was any different, I, you know, I'd let you guys know. But this is going to give us the same exact effect. I'm also going to be using an acrylic brush and a sponge. Okay. I used this to apply. This sucker is a little stiff though. <laughs> it's got a lot of Mod Podge in it. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then I'm using just an acrylic paintbrush. These I have on hand because I buy them in bulk. They actually are, they come in my decoupage kits. I sell decoupage kits on my website. And I just like the way that the Mod Podge goes on with these versus anything else. I mean, you guys can use whatever you want to apply your Mod Podge and your napkin, but I just really enjoy using these little paintbrushes. Truth be told, if I could find a thicker one, a bigger one for a good price like I get these, I'd probably purchase them, but this is what we're going to use. We're also going to be using just this piece of wood. This comes in a pack from Hobby Lobby. You can pick pieces. This is already prepped. See it? It's already cut. It's trimmed. It's nice. I did not want to cut a piece of wood for today's video. I'm trying to keep this fairly easy and I want you guys just to get the concept of what's going on versus me, you know, busting all that out. We will be cutting wood. I promise throughout this series, we're going to do all kinds of stuff. I have a whole bunch of stuff planned. Not to mention, I had a bunch of people give me tons of things that they wanted to see and comments and the poll was amazing. So thank all of you that voted on that and left comments and have Instagrammed me. I really am excited to do this series for you. I thought since I am known for napkins mostly on this channel, I thought let's get started with this. It is fall time. You know, fall has hit the crafting community. So I thought let's start with these. This is actually for sale on my napkin decoupage kits or bundles. Most of the napkins you see me use, you can purchase on my website. So in the event that anybody wants to know where I'm getting them, you can purchase them as well. Most of the time I purchase my napkins from Amazon. I purchase them from Christmas tree shops. I purchase them also in bulk sometimes from Etsy sellers because I resell them in little bundles and I use so many for crafts and, you know, DIY projects. This napkin is, it looks like it's just two ply. I haven't used this yet. So I, it's been my experience that when you're trying to do this, there's a couple ways. Okay. So I'm going to show you the ways just because, you know, this is what we're here to do. But my favorite first is to kind of tear off a corner because I can never really, like if I do this and they're all kind of sewn together, I can never really pull the napkin apart. It just gives me extra, extra issues. So I kind of like just ripping some apart, fraying it, you know, giving us a little space. If you have the time, you can try and pry it with your fingers. You can use a pair of tweezers, tweezers, tweezers <laughs> to get it off. But I'm going to show you two ways that are fairly easy and you just pick whatever works best for you. First one is going to be take a piece of painter's tape, right? And then you're going to put one on the top like so. You're going to put one on the bottom and it should just pull apart. Ah, I put it too close. <laughs> I put it too close on there. But see the napkins peeling apart already like simple, right? So that's one way to do that. And 
and just pull your napkin off. And then our other way is we're going to just take a little bit of the Mod Podge and put on our fingers. Okay, and they're just going to be sticky. And then you can just kind of feel if there's any other bits, you know, bits of your napkin. And it doesn't feel like there is. And it will also pull right off just like this. Now we're going to use the other end of this napkin because I'm using this end for demonstration purposes. <laughs> I do want to talk about our surface we're going to use real quick. I get a lot of questions about is this sanded? Is it this? It, for me, it depends on your finish, what you're going for. If you're going for a smooth finish, you want to make sure your project is already sanded down and ready to go. Oh my goodness, mind this table. <laughs> this is like a fold out table. It is just, it's wiggly. Okay, so this, you wanna make sure that your surface is really fine and finished. If you just plan on decoupaging and basically putting a layer and being done with it, make sure this is really, really smooth. And you can use 400 or greater sandpaper. I know some people recommend two, but I find that when you're doing a finish, it's so much better if you have a 400 800 grit if you can get them and people i do want to reiterate i am not a professional i am giving you my knowledge as a diyer a crafter things that i've done what has worked and what hasn't worked for me so please do not take everything i say as the end all be all of anything this is just me giving you my information you can take it or leave it. It is entirely up to you. When you choose to create a decoupage piece, you can go about that several ways. You can paint your piece beforehand. You can leave it natural, which is what we're going to do. And then we're going to blend afterwards. And I'm going to keep everything as neutral as I possibly can with this piece. I also personally find that the piece looks more natural if I rip the napkin and then place the napkin. Now you could, because this is edged, you could leave this entirely and just kind of go see how I'm pressing. You could just press it like that. And then an easy way to get a finish on this would be to just take a paintbrush and a little bit of water and then just trim it around and it will gently just peel off with a little bit of water. That is one way. Or you could decoupage the whole thing stick this sucker right on there and then you just sand it on off or you could decoupage the whole thing let it dry and then use the iron on method the iron on method we will get to today we're just doing a basic napkin wood blending afterwards and we're going to be ripping the napkin to do a blend so that is what we're doing today once you have your top layer of your napkin you can then just put your napkin on top and for me I like to just kind of tear it and hold it down in the spot that I want it to be in so this way you can kind of manipulate it with your fingers and like I said if you want to use the water and the other methods you go right ahead today this is just what we're doing in this tutorial All right, next I'm just really kind of cleaning up the area because I find that once I start Mod Podging, like I will start getting stuff all stuck to me because I get it on my hands and you know, it's just better if I don't have paper sticking to myself. I'm trying to give you the whole view. I got like a new little setup here. So I'm just trying to, I think that's a good view. So with your napkin, you can leave as much around it as you want. I personally find that the closer you try to keep it to the edges, once you're blending your wood piece into your napkin, 
It just looks a little bit more seamless. Now let's get to the sponge real quick because I have so many questions about this. Let's talk about the sponge. Why do I like using the sponge? People use cling wrap. People use all this stuff. I personally like using the sponge because as I'm pressing this on here, it's a napkin. You know what I mean? Like you try to stick this up your nose. You know what I mean? Like it snot goes right through it. You feel what I'm saying? So let's think about this. Mod Podge is on here. You're pressing your napkin down with the sponge. Where is the extra going through? Right into your sponge. That actually, that's why my sponge is a little crusty. It's a little hard because it's got a lot of Mod Podge, ugh, a lot of Mod Podge that has absorbed through the napkin. So once you place, because we do this in small sections, and then you press any extra Mod Podge, it's coming up through your napkin and it's immediately being absorbed into that sponge. It's not spreading over here. So when I go to put more Mod Podge over here, or I lift this piece back up, guess what our napkin is not going to do? Our napkin is not going to smear and it's not going to rip because it's already going to be in place because that excess then went into our sponge. That is why I love this. I love that I figured this out. I was having such a struggle because I'm, one of my favorite methods is the iron on when you're trying not to have any bubbles or wrinkles. And I absolutely love that. I found that when I also used a saran wrap at times or, you know, the cling wrap, that when I'm doing that, sometimes it actually will pull the bubbles over here and it will press the napkin in different directions. I do like using the saran wrap a little bit more for something that's a tiny bit thicker than a napkin. But again, that's a preference and there is no, in my opinion, really right or wrong way. It, it just depends on the design and what you're trying to accomplish when you're doing this kind of thing. Some of my secrets you don't see me doing when I'm filming on my uh, normal videos is I will pick the piece up and I will bring it to myself and I will line that sucker up. You know what I mean? I will sit there and make sure it's as even or as centered as possible. And sometimes this actually takes me a couple minutes just to make sure that I'm able to have it as centered as I want and you guys have a good picture on film. Because it is, I film this way, a lot of creators film with the camera over there. But for me, I have a little bit of vertigo. And when I watch creators film and it's upside down and I'm looking down at the table, it does something to me. So I actually struggle to watch YouTube videos like that. <laughs> So I prefer to film where I can actually see it face down like this or directly over top. That looks well, that looks good for me as well. But for me, I try to do this a little bit off camera and then I will place my hand tightly down on the spot and start at a little space. And less is always more when you're doing a napkin. And you can kind of let the napkin see how I just let it fall down to figure out where your end's gonna be. Cause remember, you don't wanna do a whole bunch every single spot, just a little bit, just to get this napkin down on here. So I'm just gonna start by pressing with my thumb and then I'm gonna smooth it out gently. You wanna do this ever so gently. And there we go. Our napkin is now in place and we can continue. And at this point, I'll turn it upside down and just kind of go down like this.
I sped that part up just because I wanted to give you an idea. When you watch me on video, it looks like it takes me two seconds, but that was about three minutes of me just doing that tiny little part. I really like to take my time doing this. I do not like to just throw a ton of Mod Podge on here and just, the damage is done, honestly, at that point. You got your wrinkles, you can't take it back. And doing these thin layers, I also feel like your napkin gets on there so super well that once you put that real thin layer on there, it just works out really well. And if you feel like it's getting a little bunched up in certain spots, don't stress it. You can always, you know, like I said, if you want to go back with the iron one method, wrinkles are your worst enemy, then this is not the technique for you. But this is very minimal with the wrinkles you're going to get in the process. And also, I do want to show you. So see how you can see some of the wood grains? I have a lot of people that will also comment and say, Brandy, why are you not... Um, just putting it on the wood X, Y, and Z. Well, because a lot of projects, this, this is why I don't want the wood to show through my napkin. So I will paint this a white or I'll do a whitewash or stain the whole thing. It won't show through the napkin as well. But for stuff like this, because we're going to be blending the wood into this piece, we want it to look cohesive. So the actual wood grain showing through, you're going to see it. It's going to look stunning. I already know this is going to look beautiful. Another reason, and I just did this on purpose. I forgot to film it. My bad. <laughs> I'm learning as I go. Um, I put extra Mod Podge up here in this corner. Can you see that? So what I, I wanted to do that on purpose because this is another reason why I like to Mod Podge as I go or decoupage as I go because... If you're going to stain or paint afterwards and this gets in here, it's going to be shiny and the color of your stain versus or the paint versus this is going to be different. It doesn't matter like really if it's for you, you're only going to be the person that notices. But when that happens and I notice it, I try to hurry up and just, you know, get it off of there as quick as I can before it dries. And when I get around my edges, I'm going to show you guys another little trick. I think I have, I think I have one. Hold on one second. Let me see if I got it. So another little trick I like to use, and I like to do this, especially on my furniture pieces. I don't really go into showing that as well. But when you're doing a napkin, you can, or a piece of paper, any of it, you can go around your edges like this and you can take a fan brush. They're super, super, super thin. Put a little bit of Mod Podge on your edge, right? Not a lot. And I mean, you can just put it in there. Don't be afraid of the Mod Podge. And then you can go around and test to make sure all your edges are on your napkin. If they're not, guess what? Look at that. It's going to pop up. And guess what's happening now? The Mod Podge that is now on your fan brush is just under there. And then you just pop it on down and then try and get it up again. And look, it's not coming up that time. So I like to go around the edges and just see there's another little, oh, my Mod Podge is gone already. Because you just keep a light layer. You don't want to have this gunked on here because then you'll have a tongue gunked all around the edges. Actually, it looks like the napkin's bunched right there. We're just going to pop that off. There we go. And this also just kind of gives your edges a nice little you know, thick seal as well, or thin seal as well. And you just go around the whole piece and just check. And if you can't get it up, see how there's like nothing coming up here, then your napkin is on there really well. Now, I'm not going to use this because my napkin is super thin, but sometimes napkins you get, they're not really thin like this. Even once you pull them off, they're a little bit thicker. So when you look at your ends, they're not really blended in with the wood. But before you do what I'm about to tell you, make sure this is completely dry. And whatever you do, do not take a heat gun to it. Do not heat up your napkin with your Mod Podge. If you are not familiar with how heat gun works or how Mod Podge works, so just to give you an idea, 
in order to get this stuff to attach to this when you're doing the iron on method what are you doing to the iron you're heating up the iron pressing this one here and then it's heating up the mod podge which is then causing it to stick to the napkin so when you're trying to dry something quick do not use a heat gun on this. Unfortunately, the best method when you're decoupaging is time. I, I hate to admit it <laughs> as much as I hate waiting. That is absolutely the best method for this. But in the event that, again, you're dealing with a thicker napkin, take a high grit sandpaper. And I do not mean a 200 grit. I mean 400 or greater. I have 800s around here. I'm not sure where they are. And I even have 1200s. Um, I love using the... Personally, I like 800s for this, but you can, when this is completely dry, you can just take, you're going to rub it and it's going to blend the napkin because when you feel it, you ideally want it to be as close to the surface as possible and not have a lot of lumps and bumps in it. But for the most part, I'm really happy with this and we're just going to get to blending our wood in. For this last part, we're just going to use the Antique Waverly Wax and yes, I put down some paper and... I have another video to film after this, and I'm not trying to get this stage in area. I spent like two hours this weekend cleaning this whole space, and ain't nobody trying to have to do that again while they got to film something else. <laughs> so for this, you can use however, obviously, however you want. I am just going to take a napkin, and I'm going to just kind of plop it in here, and then we're going to just go around the whole edge to start. Okay, so here's where you got to watch because you can easily screw this up and start getting stuff everywhere like I'm about to. So make sure that when you're pulling your ends in, you're pulling it back like this because this wax is like not forgiving at all. And lucky for me, like this is kind of the look I'm going for. I want this to be rustic anyway, so it's not going to matter too much, but... If you do not, pay attention because it will leave prints and then get all on your napkin. I'm happy with that. I am going to now take my gloves off and you guys are probably going to laugh at me, but one of my favorite ways, and it's funny because Crafty Kathy, if you guys are not familiar with her, she talks about it too. One of her favorite ways to distress is by using her fingers. And I don't know if you guys have noticed lately, but I try to keep my nails done a little bit now that I have the brows in channel. So this way people aren't looking at them jacked hands all the time because <laughs> all I do is build stuff and paint everything. So I try to be minimal with the amount of mess because it's honestly, it rips my fingernails up to paint them constantly and getting them done. Like I just, oh, it's not good for them, but it looks nice, right? So a little bit on the fingers. Once you get your edges around and then softly go around and start blending. Oh, too much. Too much. All right. Blending it in right there. Also a little shading trick. So I'm taking a lot right here and I'm kind of putting it on the corners and pulling it in heavy. We're just keeping it right here on the corners. We don't want it to get anywhere near our napkin, okay? We're going to just kind of, and then we're gonna pull it back. And you're going to pull this away from your napkin. And it's just going to give your edges a little bit of a darker look.
people that's going to be it for this tutorial let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this tutorial and if there's anything you would like to see me go over with you in the future this way i can put it on the list and if you want to see this in its final reveal stage i'll take a couple pictures and i will put it at the end of the video for you until next time bye